everybody, I'm here with Kurt Royal at Big Matador Recording in Clarksville, Tennessee. He is a great friend of mine and has been my producer on several albums. We've written songs together and he really taught me a lot about the craft of songwriting. So I'm interviewing him today to share from his experience in the songwriting world. He has written multiple hits and I'm not a hit writer, yet I do write songs and sing them and he's written songs for other people to sing and they've gone all over the world. So I'm so excited to share a little bit about his thought process when writing. So Kurt, thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. And being willing to explain some of your process. Okay. I'd love to hear um, a little bit about your story, how you first started to write songs. I think I was probably eight years old when I wrote my first song. Uh, and boy, I'm really going to date myself here when I say this. But I used to love to listen to George Jones mm -hmm. as a little kid. And uh, I would listen to the songs that he had recorded. And I started at a young age understanding structure, mm -hmm. uh, how, you know, you'll take a line. And, and I used to count syllables. Really? Uh, even songs, that young? Even at that young, yes. And uh, I would, so I'd count the syllables in the first line, count the syllables in the second line, and I, I figured out that there is a structure and a pattern patterns, to writing. Yeah. And then I found a lot of times they would rhyme, the rhyme scheme, I would analyze it. Even at that age, I really did that. Wow. And uh, they would sometimes they would take line one that would rhyme with nothing. Mm -hmm. Line two was had a word that ended, and then line three would rhyme with nothing, but line four would rhyme with line two. Mm -hmm. So they would get their structure like that. Some songs would be line one, and then line two would rhyme. Then line three, and then line four would rhyme. So you realize they had patterns. They you do have patterns. That there's yes. a certain way to write and right. think about where you're going to rhyme. There's no law that says it has to be done this way. Right. Rules are meant to be broken. They but are, yes. You can do that. You could write just for fun if you wanted and yes. write however you wanted. You could have a ballad with a million different verses if you want. Yes. But if you're writing commercially, like writing a song that you want to go to radio or want to go to an artist, there are formulas that work well for the listener right. and that people will want to listen to over and over. That's correct. So you got into writing in Nashville. Let's talk about that yes. for a minute. Uh, I was playing at a, at a place in uh, Dallas, Texas. The owner of the uh, club, which was the Longhorn Ballroom, this was Bob Will's club back. He, he actually built it, and he gave it to a guy named Dewey Groom. I was the house band, the, uh, the lead singer and the guitarist mm -hmm. in that band. So he came to the band, and this place was, it seated 3,000 people, it was huge. He came to the band, and he said, you know, I want to record an album of original songs and sell them as a 25th anniversary Longhorn Ballroom album. This album is still well, out there, by yeah. the way. You could buy, you could find it if you do. It's very rare. And you were there, so it was kind of like the right time yes. at the right place, yep. kind of thing. What happened was, I wrote. I, I said nobody wanted to write. Nobody in the band said. Everybody said I don't write. I don't know. And I said well, I don't either. But I'll, you know, I mean, I had dabbled like, as a young kid, yeah. as a child, like I was telling mm -hmm. you, I had dabbled with it a sure. lot. And I thought, you know what? This is a chance for me to try to do this. So I wrote six songs, and they were all. I'll put on that album, and three of those songs went on to become hit records later. Wow. Hit songs, and one was for George Jones, uh, one was for a guy named Clinton Gregory back in the 90s who was very popular. So the first six songs I wrote, the first three became, two of them became number ones. But that wasn't just out of nowhere either because you've always loved music, right. you were already playing guitar, singing and stuff, and then you had done all of that analyzing when you were younger. But can you imagine what would have happened if you just didn't take that opportunity to write and then that catapulted your songwriting career? I believe everything happens for a reason. I do not want to try to get too religious here, although we, I, I, I just want I to believe say, that too. I, I believe do. that uh, we've all been given gifts right. and we need to use them. And I them. do believe that that was laid in my lap and, it's, and it was my opportunity to say, okay, here, here it is. Let's, yeah. let's try to write something, and I did. And uh, I didn't know that it was going to do what it did. Mm -hmm. What happened was Mel Tillis, who was a very big star at that time, he had gotten bought one of these albums 
while he was there doing a concert, yeah. took it and listened to it, called me the next day. Of course, Mel stuttered real bad. He said, this is uh, Mel, Mel Tillis and I'm going to talk to Kurt Ryle. You know? I thought it was a joke, you know, so yeah. I hung up. You thought oh, it was I hung a up prank on Mel Tillis, yeah. And he called me back and he said, I, this really is Mel Tillis and I need to talk to you. Uh, he, he flew me to Nashville and signed me as a songwriter to wow. uh, Cedarwood, which was the biggest publishing mm -hmm. company in Nashville. And then he became like a mentor to you? I actually started out as his songwriter and became his record producer. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yep. you just never know. One thing can lead to yeah, something it else. Always does. And, it always does. Um, and you became friends with a lot of different musicians and songwriters yeah. in Nashville. Mm -hmm. Your songs have been on lots of different country records. Yes. Too. And a real good example of, you know, a lot of, I don't want to get into your questions here. I don't know what you're going to ask, but I do want to say this. I had a number one single in the nation mm -hmm. at the time. Yeah, what and was your. It, it was Dying One Shot at a Time, mm -hmm. uh, recorded by Clinton Gregory. And it was number one in cash box at that time. And uh, Mel Tillis uh, told me after he signed me, he said, now I want you to learn how to write. So he this, saw the raw talent. Yeah, there. he saw that I was just raw. And I hear I'm thinking I'm all this in a bag of chips, right? <laughs> I got a number one yeah, single. Yeah, that'll right? humble, humble you. <laughs> yeah, it humbled me a lot. But uh, what he, what he, he, he realized that I needed to learn now how to really work this mm -hmm. craft. It is a craft. Yeah. And, uh, and in the craft. There's a difference between writing a good song, you were writing good songs, but the difference there and the wisdom to be able to write a great song. I think I got Is that what you learned? I, I think I got lucky, Lydia, with that first song. I really do. I think there was a lot of luck involved with it, and even the second song. But uh, he set me up with not just any song, he said, I'm going to set you up with a great writer. Mm -hmm. He didn't say he was going to set me up with the greatest writer who ever lived. But that's what he did. Wow. He set me up with a writing appointment with Hank Cochran, who wrote all those Patsy Cline hits and all of those great, I mean, this guy probably wrote maybe 200 number one hits. Yeah. So and when I wrote with him, I realized, I, I, I'm going to tell you something, Lydia. I remember the first time you walked in the studio and you played me something you had written. And I listened to it and I said, let's, you played me several things. I said, let's write something together. And we did, and I remember your response when we finished. You went, I just wrote my first song. Mm. I yeah, remember hearing you say so that. Yeah, it's so different. It's just a whole different experience. That's exactly what I did when I sat down to write with Hank Cocker. I had a number one song in the nation, and I still went, I just this wrote my, like first my first song. song. Mm -hmm. yeah, I knew how to yeah. write. So, so you've been writing for a long time now. Yeah. Uh, how would you say your thought process like, process is like when you sit down to write a song today? You know, you, uh, there was a time when I would say, you, you need to have a title, mm -hmm. and you need to start writing around that title. Yes. There are no rules in this. Sometimes if I sit down to write, and I really want to write, and I don't have a title that just knocks me out, I'll just come up with a first line. And I'll just say something like, I've been down this road before. Mm -hmm. Just something, something similar, to get started. Something like that. I've been down so this road before. So you're not looking at a blank right, page. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And I will yeah. put that in, and then I'll go, been down the show before. I've walked through that door. You know what I'm saying? So you and start to build that. You story start to build, and first thing you know, you've got a song. You know, mm -hmm. so there's no, there are no rules to this. Yeah, inspiration uh, can come from so many yeah. different ways, but to be able to start with nothing and end with a right. complete song takes well, time. Yes. To and most people out there, if you're a songwriter, or if you, or if you want to be a songwriter, everyone knows who Dean Dillon is. He's one of the greatest writers of all time. And I saw Dean do this one time. Uh, a guy told Dean, he said, look, you can't write a, a, a hit song without a hit title. You know, he's telling the greatest songwriter in the world. And <laughs> he was, he was, a, he was a young guy. And Dean, of course, being the, he was not, a, Dean was not one of your personable guys. Dean was a, just kind of a hard-nosed guy, but he said, I can write a song about that chair you're sitting in. Like that, so just, just like that. And the guy goes, the chair? He, he goes, thought, yeah, right. Now, you hear what I'm saying? The chair? He wrote The Chair for George Strait that day to prove wow. to that kid he could write a song about that chair. Yeah. There's no rules to this. Mm. Uh, you That's don't have to have a hit idea. You don't have to have mm -hmm. any of that. You just yeah. start writing. If you don't have an idea, just start. Just write something on paper. Start building on it. Yeah. You may end up with a great song, and you may not. But the main thing to do when you're start starting out mm -hmm. 
it's stick with structure. Yeah, you know, just to start you, with something. Yeah, if you have if you write a line that says, I've been down this road before, how many syllables? I've been down this road before the seven mm -hmm. syllables. That means line two can be twelve syllables, but line three needs to be back to seven. Mm -hmm. to follow that line pattern. four needs to be twelve again. You see sure. what I'm saying? Try to stick to those principles of structure. Mm -hmm. When you're when you're learning now you can break those rules as you go and you get better and uh but mainly structure is the key mm -hmm. i wrote a song i used to write with a guy who was a poet and he would he would bring me poetry and he was perfectly perfectly structured and we wrote songs together that were cuts that were hits mm -hmm. and, because uh, it was easy like it was singable it was easy all to i had to, to do music. was put a melody to it mm -hmm. and that came naturally yeah. to you yes yeah. so when you look at just lyrics from a poem do you already start hearing melodies in yes, your head yes and there is a video out on youtube yeah there's one of you doing yeah, that doing but exactly i wanted to that. pick your brain a little more in follow up to that video mm -hmm. on what goes through your mind it's hard to explain to people when music just comes to you because it might not just come to some people so yeah. what is that like are you thinking okay, this is a sad song, so I want to go more towards these chords yes. on guitar. Are you thinking, like, I want to start here so the chorus can go up? Like, what are you thinking when you're putting music to, like, lyrics that are already written or a poem? Yeah. The lyrics speak. And if the lyrics are funny, you're going to have some tempo in the song. You want some it's, going, it's going to be funny, yeah. Mm -hmm. If the lyrics are sad, you're going to get some minor chords going in here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and you, you, you just make the melody fit the lyrics. I do I do poems for people all around the world. Mm -hmm. I have clients in Denmark and in Africa, Australia, yeah. England, and they send poetry in the mail, email. Mm -hmm. And then I'll take your poem and I'll put a, a melody to it. And honestly it takes me about five minutes to do that. Yeah, it's because simple. you've done this for a long because time. I, because I'm a musician. I'm mm -hmm. a I am a studio musician before I'm a songwriter. So mm -hmm. I just kinda let the lyrics lead me to that world. Yeah. And when you're writing, is there a difference between writing just for fun, where you have infinite ideas and you can just write whatever you want to write, and writing commercially, like for the radio or for an artist that you want to sing it? Yes. Uh, in the beginning, in the early days, I felt that I couldn't write unless I was being led, so to speak, by mm -hmm. the writing spirit, by you the know. Inspiration. Yes. Uh, yeah. I found later that that's not the way it's done in Nashville. Mm -hmm. uh, when I got to Nashville, and I first I signed with Mel Tillis, but later went on to, to write for Charlie Daniels, mm -hmm. uh, Warner Brothers, and several other companies. They expect you to go into a room, a sterile environment that they provide for you with yeah. a piano or a guitar, and, and come out with a finished song. song. And yeah. that's a day, it's a nine to five job mm -hmm. that you do daily. You walk in and you write. Of course, if you write a song in two hours, you're done for the day. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it became, I think it's, I personally never liked it, mm -hmm. but I got. Do you think or, it's a good exercise, though, to write something every day just to get in the flow of it? I think it keeps your mind focused, but I also think it's, it can take away from that that part of you that, that wants to release something that's really being laid on your heart. Mm -hmm. Whenever you start to write, you know, as a job, suddenly the it creative, some, of the, love some of, of the creative side is not there. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, we've gone through a phase in music where there's not a lot of great lyrical content these days. Sure. That's because... Of the same thing over and over. Or that's because of this, what we're talking mm -hmm. about, in my opinion. Because people want to just write what they feel and leave it alone and yeah, not that's right. mess with the structure of it. A so good much. example of what I'm talking about. And one of the great writers is Brett James, uh, Troy Burgess. There's some great songwriters out there. And they used to book a recording session every three weeks. Wow. And, just and they would book it for the whole year. And then they'd say, I'll have the songs ready. So they would come to the session. That gives you motivation too. When that you know forces you've you. Be, <laughs> it forces you. And believe it or not, those easy. guys had some great songs. So it it can be done. Yeah. And uh, I, I did it, but I, I preferred writing the other way. But sometimes sure. we get lazy, see, and we just go, well, nothing's hitting me so, today, so I'm going to go play tennis, right? Yeah, and, that gives you yeah. a deadline right. to get it done. And yeah. I think deadlines are helpful for, uh, for any of us. I think if it's we just block bad. off time and say, okay, I've got an hour here, so I'm going to write as much as I can in this hour. Right. And that seems to help me. Or in co-writing, when you're writing with someone else, uh, you're 
making that appointment, blocking off that time yeah. to write. It's important. And, and it'll teach you, too. It, yeah. It teaches you also uh, not only motivation, but it also teaches you discipline. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be disciplined to go in and sit down and go, we're going to write a song today. Yeah. And uh, even if it's a bad one. Yeah, and, and do you start out, like when you are in a, in a co-writing situation where you're trying to figure out what to write about, do you just throw random ideas out there and brainstorm first to kind of see what you want to start with? I love this question. This is my favorite question you Okay, asked. awesome. I want to tell you why. Uh, I used to write with a guy named Billy Henderson. Mm -hmm. Billy Henderson wrote tons of hit songs. Billy Henderson could not play an instrument. Billy Henderson could not even pat his foot in time. Wow. The guy had no musical no rhythm. gift, yeah. no talent, but he was a lyrical genius. Mm -hmm. So we, went, we, we would play tennis every day. And then when we got through playing tennis, we went to the office to write a song. So one day, we're standing in the, in the office at Warner Brothers, and the company I wrote for. And I said, let's write something. And I was looking out the window, and a big storm was coming. Now in Oklahoma, if, where, if, 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 if where I'm from, yeah. if it's going to rain, the leaves start opening up. Mm -hmm. So I looked outside, and I said, the leaves on the trees are turning inside out. Billy, being the great lyricist he was, he answered that. He said, from the great white north, there's a big black cloud. Mm. Beautiful line. So I turned around and looked at him and I said, run for shelter if you can. And he said, because there's a storm in the heartland. Woo! And we did this. We never picked up a guitar. We mm -hmm. just bounced. It was his turn. It was my turn. Yeah. And we had like 15 seconds to spit out that line. Wow. Do you know, we wrote a whole song like that. We mm -hmm. never fixed, we never altered anything. We just put a melody to it, mm -hmm. and Billy Ray Cyrus recorded it, and it went yeah. platinum. That sold a million records. A storm in the Heartland. Yeah. So there's no rules to this. Yeah. You don't even have to have a guitar. Mm -hmm. You can write without anything. Right. So. That's amazing, yeah. and that's a magical moment too when you do have somebody who's on the same page as you, and you can that just bounce back so important. ideas. I think that's really helpful. Yes. Um, do you think you've gotten into ruts where you've had writer's block and you've had to overcome that? What are some things that help you kind of get out of the funk? Write with better writers than me. Hmm. When I get into that situation, yeah. I need to step it up and write with somebody who's better, than, who I perceive to be better than me yeah. or have more knowledge or more, more skills or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I find that uh, they will motivate me to come back. Mm -hmm. I've always heard, I remember the old guys used to say this, if you're going to write a song, write it with someone who's at least as good as you are or better. Don't go down and write with someone who, but when Unless us guys... you are in a mentoring situation where you want to bring that's people up. That's my point. When you're trying to improve your craft, try to write with people that have more right. experience or that's who right. are where you want to be. Today, I spend 90% of my writing appointments with beginners. Mm -hmm. And I try try to mentor them and help them to because get, people did that for you. They did, and without the Hank Cochran's of the world and those people, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be here sitting here talking to you about this. Yeah, you're so paying it forward. Time. You've done that for me, teaching right. me the craft, and now I'm trying to help other people right. as well who are wanting to get started, who might be lyricists but have a hard time putting right. music to lyrics, or um, maybe have written songs but just want to get better and improve. And I think it's always great. You never can learn everything. I, I feel like we never truly make it and never have to learn anything. We're constantly learning. It's just a journey. There's yeah. no destination. And there's there's more ideas, there's more songs. I believe there's room for everyone and for every style, I agree. for every gift. I love all styles of music. Yeah. My son raps. I even like that. I, yeah. I, think, they're, I think it's wonderful, all of it. And so my advice, though, to new writers yeah. is to try to write with people who are a little bit better than you are, just so you can keep learning and learning mm -hmm. and learning. And then when you reach a point where you feel like you, you know, then you can go back and help other people. Yeah. So, so how would you encourage someone who has written songs but is wanting to get better at the craft? Who, I mean, you said a little bit about that of, you know, write with people that are better, but maybe people that are writing on their own. How would you encourage them? If you're in the Nashville area, I don't know, depending on where you live, if you're in the Nashville or the surrounding Nashville area, there's an organization called TSAI. I strongly recommend people to go and become a member of that mm -hmm. because it's a, what it is is it's a lot of songwriters it's who are up and coming. Some are way above others and some are starting out. 
but you can learn a lot and, and you're and you're surrounded with people and when you surround yourself with people who are trying to do the same thing you are, you're going to mo get motivated. Yeah, that so makes sense. So I would, I would recommend that you so join So look for TSA. people in your area who are doing what you're interested in doing, yes. who are doing things well that you can learn from. Yeah. And then I can see how that would motivate you yes. to just want to be better and be the best version of yourself as a writer. Um, and to not be afraid of sharing your ideas with people because... Right it might turn out better than it would have if yes. it was just you and if it just stayed in your notebook and no one ever saw it. That's so. correct. And one other thing I would like to add to that. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you get in a room with a new writer, someone who's young and, and inexperienced, they're a little hesitant to talk. They're a little hesitant. They have a line in their head but they're scared to throw it out because mm -hmm. they don't want you to think they're dumb or that the line is dumb. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as a dumb line. No such mm -hmm. thing. Sometimes you could throw out a line that might not even fit the song, but you might have thrown out one word that makes me think, oh, wow, I didn't think of that word. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Speak. Speak out. Yeah. Always. Just put it out there. You never yeah. know when one line might make you think of another line, exactly. which is gold. That's right. And you wouldn't have gotten to it unless you threw out the kind of quirky line that you had initially. That's right. So I think that's great advice for someone who's just getting yeah. started and wanting to get better at the craft. I appreciate your time for letting me pick your brain a little bit about your process with your songwriting and if anyone listening is wanting to check out more of Kurt's music and his producing and some examples of his songs you can go to bigmatadorrecording.com and check out his website. You can also see some of the songs that we've written together yes. on my website as well. So thank you so much for What your is your time. website? rusticsongbird.com there you go. so make sure to check that out um, for some songs that we've written together one of my favorite songs that we've written together was one of the first and that was butterfly yes i love that song and that song tells a story i love a song that tells a story so my challenge to you watching today is to just start start writing you never know what's going to come out of it and most importantly to keep writing don't get it discouraged and don't stop just because you have writer's block, but push through and get to the other side and you'll be proud of yourself for trying and, something new. And I'd like to say one last thing too. If you write something and you say, well, I don't have any, any way of doing anything with this. I don't know what to do with it when it's written. Mm -hmm. Send it to me. I, I, my email address, Kurt Ryle, C-U-R-T-R-Y-L-E at gmail.com. Send it to me. Let me look at it. I'll help you awesome. if I can. Thank you so much You're for welcome. that. Are you a songwriter and want to take your writing to the next level? Sign up for my free 7-day writing challenge linked in the description below. You will receive a writing prompt in your email each day and also have access to a private Facebook group for feedback and encouragement. Click the link in the description below to get started.